Welcome back to 20 Minutes in the Text. My name is Andrew, and I'm here with... Mason. Hello, everybody. Mason. All right, good. Um, we'd like to welcome you back into our discussion on uh, the book of James. But before we begin, uh, Mason, just real quick, how are you doing today? What's good in your life? I'm doing well. Uh, I think that this warmer weather that we have today, whenever you're watching it, it's warm today, warmer is nice. Um, I've also started to... It's fun, but it's also challenging. I started to like review my Greek textbook. Uh, so it's fun learning a new skill, but it's also challenging. So it's good overall, you know. How about you? Absolutely. Uh, I was going to say the weather too. I mean, it's sunshiny today. It's getting warmer. Trends are, are going that way. So um, I just love spring. And mm -hmm. aside from the dandelions, um, it's been good. So um, life is good. And uh, I will admit that my children are um, really, of course, they're a blessing, but uh, bringing me face to face with James and, um, you know, counting all trials and all sorts of things as joy. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, it doesn't make it any easier. But uh, we're all trucking along and we've been home together enjoying meals and things like that. So, um, you know, counting in joy, trials of all kinds, I think that uh, points us pretty well into uh, the text. Yes. So let's, let's just dive right in. I'm going to grab my scriptures and um, let's uh, look at James 1, starting at verse 19. James just wastes no time here. He just dives right back in, um, talking about, uh, again, how we live this Christian life. So starting at verse 19, know this, my beloved brothers. Let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. For the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he was like. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. Oof. Yikes. Um, there's, there's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot. I, I'm just going to stop there. There's a lot right yeah. there. Um, yeah. But uh, what, what do we got? Uh, Mason, the, back at the very beginning, we have kind of three commands, three instructions. What does is, what is James hit with us? Bing, bang, boom. What does he give us? Yeah, probably one of my, uh, one of my favorite parts of, of James, uh, mostly because I'm, I fail at this, but the, the quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. Right. And letting the, the, as he says, implanted word sort of just stew. Right. It's beautiful. Yeah. Um, I like how you said it's one of your favorites because you're not very good at it. Um, <laughs> yes. I am absolutely positively 0 for 3 on this one. Just <laughs> on the daily. On the daily. Um, I am, in fact, uh, slow to hear, very quick to insert my own opinions. And, um, like a match, angry at the drop of a hat. So um, I'd say there's con some conviction here. And uh, for those of you who are listening, watching, um, you know, good for you if you're not convicted by this. I mean, you know, write a book and I buy it. But otherwise, I mean, I think we all struggle with this. Yeah, Every it's day. also refreshing because this is not only, you know, am I a, a chief of the sinners of this, but. Uh, the society that we live in is, is just, is, this is refreshing to hear because we don't do it in our society, right? So it's just nice. But I think uh, in all of it, um, for what Paul's trying to do, or excuse me, Paul, oof, um, what, uh, what James- Wonder Ah, <laughs> uh, we were in, we were, yeah, anyway. Um, the nice thing about it is that what James is trying to say here is essentially, um, get out of the way. And that's what ah. I like, right? Get, so, um, Receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls, right? So, so get out of the way of the purity of the gospel 
let it just seep in. Listen to the the forgiveness of sins coming to you. Um, be slow to speak. You have to you have to learn what it means before you are able to actually speak what it says, and then uh, in that be slow to anger because when you let that stew over, you know the joy of the gospel is going to completely protrude more than you know your your anger. Yeah, you know, and as we get out of the way and let the implanted word work, it's going to point us to a God who is just these things. Yes. It's going to point us back to a God who has been uh, quick to hear and slow to speak. Um, and uh, what is it? The psalmist tells us that the Lord is merciful and gracious, yeah. right? Um, he's slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. And this implanted word is going to point us to the one who has done this for us already. And so right. we need not do this because even if we are quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger, even our attempts at doing those things still will not produce the righteousness of God that's needed for salvation. Yeah. But instead, the word points us to, to the one who has been righteous for us. Yeah, exactly. I think that the, the thing that we need to, to understand here, and this is sort of revealing what we talked about a couple, a couple times ago, is the fact that uh, we're, we're starting with the basis and the knowledge that grace, uh, uh, by grace through faith, right? Salvation's by grace through faith. That's our starting point, right? So when we're reading this, right, we, we still have this understanding in our heads. So Jesus has already done this. He's shown us the perfect thing. He's died the perfect death, risen to life. And now we're called to essentially, as Luther says, be mini Christs, right? So we're doing this not out of, we need to earn our salvation, but out of uh, Christ has done this, and, and, and I am an imitator of Christ. And that's the, sort of the beauty of it. There's, there's, a lot more than, there's a lot more to this word of Christian, right? This identity as Christians is just that, is to be many Christs. You know? yeah. And uh, as an imitator of Christ, as one who is building themselves up, living more and more every day in faith into the identity of Christ, I now no longer see being slow to speak and quick to hear as um, a burden, but who I am. Um, yeah. Now, I'd like uh, I'd like this person right now who understands that to come visit my house between five thirty and say seven thirty at night, um, and maybe just like close my mouth and 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 help me uh, make it through. But um, again. Consider every trial joy, right? So uh, even even those things. Yeah, I mean, what a, what a fantastic uh, mm. section here. But then um, we get kind of another bomb. I feel like James is just dropping bombs uh, after one after another. In chapter 22, <laughs> chapter 20, how many chapters? Not 22. In verse 22, um, James reminds us, and uh, this is kind of the, the heart, in a way, the heart of this, this letter. Be doers of the word and not hearers only. Because when you're just a hearer only, you are deceiving yourselves. Yeah. So can you help make some sense of that, Mason? What does it mean to be a doer of the word? Yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy because of the fact that Paul just told us to, to just sort of to listen and, and not speak real quick. And yet now... James did too. Paul. Man, I'm Paul. I just, I, I got Paul in my brain. Um, James is telling us just to sort of... Uh, weirdly, he tells us essentially to get out of the way, right? But then now he's telling us to do the word. And so it's like, ah! But again, it's sort of, right, if we think linear about this, which of course, you know, the Christian life is linear and yet not. Um, we've got... We're listening to the word, we are quick to hear, slow to speak. We sort of we get the we get the goods down, and then we start then living. So we we become we're brought into the Christian life. We're brought into the, the body, and then now we start to work. Right. So we're we're doers of the word by meaning we are doing now the things that Jesus did. Right. He's he is he's helping the poor. He's helping the needy. Um, he's helping the widow. He's helping those who are are less fortunate. Right. And in doing so, in doing these deeds, speaking the word as well. So it's, it's really, as Jesus did on earth, word and deed working as one. 
Yeah, absolutely. You know, James, he makes that statement, but then he, he helps us understand that too. And, you know, um, he offers it by way of an analogy and he talks about the mirror, right? right. And so um, he says, if you are just a hearer only of the word, you know, you're getting yourself ready, you're checking your, your hair, um, you know, in times like this when haircuts are not available, you spend a little more time in the mirror trying to figure out what to do with this. But you look at yourself and you, you check it out. You go, yeah, we're good. Okay. I am who I am. And you turn around, you walk out the door and you immediately forget who you are. Yeah, right. <laughs> Wait, what color is my hair? Yeah, right. How many, how many noses do I have? What, who am I? What's going on? Right. And so again, this brings it back to that identity. Right. We are called to get out of the way so Jesus can tell us exactly who we are. Mm -hmm. And then if we aren't being who we are, we might as well have forgotten who we are. Yeah. Right. Uh, and so instead being a doer of the word uh, is tied to our identity in Christ. Right. And so if you are a Christian Mason, well, sorry, yeah, you are, but as a Christian Mason, if you're really a Christian, you will not, uh, you'll fail. I don't, you're fired or whatever we'll do. Um, if you are a Christian, um, you are going to do the word because that's what a Christian does. Yeah. Um, and that, I mean, it's a scary thought because sometimes we don't do the word. Right. Right. Um, yeah, and see, this is this is the important thing uh, that now I'm going to address uh, all of our friends watching. This is why it is so incredibly important to be doing what you're doing now and studying God's word and going into worship and and just immersing yourself in the grace and goodness of God. You know, obviously, we know Luther as this great scholar, but still Luther, you know, at the end of his life is saying, I've studied the word all this time, and yet I'm, I still have no idea. I still have not even scratched the surface of the riches of that. And the more and more and more we immerse ourselves in the word, the more it becomes a part of who we are, so that when we live, it, the word, we're just doing the word because of the fact that we've been so fully washed in the word. Um, and, and that's so important, you know, you can't just, uh, you can't just go out and expect to, to have the Christian life. Oh, I got it down. No, this is a, this is a whole life of just being immersed with the forgiveness and knowledge of God. Yeah. And that, that's exactly where James takes us. And he, so he contrasts this, this, uh, this one that deceives themselves, that forgets what they look like with someone who is looking straight on in the face of God, in the face of his word. And one who returns to God's word, one who's there, um, one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, he will be blessed in his doing. Now, a couple quick notes. This sounds like we just are going against everything we just said. We're right. saying, oh, well, if you can look at the law of God and do all the Ten Commandments and, and persevere, do it good enough, then you'll be blessed. But um, this is one of those times where it's, it's really great to understand the, the language that's being used. And similar to in the Old Testament, right, the law of God is synonymous with the word of God, right, and the words of God. And so this is someone who literally looks into God's perfect word, the word or words of liberty, words that free us. Yeah, words of freedom, um, yeah. And that freedom, that liberty, is what allows us to persevere, mm. right? Uh, it's not up to me. It's not up to you. If you're, if you're listening, if you're watching, please hear this. It's not up to you. You don't have to be good enough. You don't have to persevere. This is saying, no, the, the law of liberty, it frees you, and that's how you persevere. You've been freed. Yeah. And you'll be blessed in your doing. Why? Because your works are really great, and Grandma, um, you know, Studebaker appreciates your help. I don't know. I don't know. No, because what you do is done in faith. And if it's done in faith, it's perfect yeah, because it's right. done in Christ. Yeah. And again, James, uh, he, uh, it's all in how you read it, man. Right? Yeah. Like we have to start with, again, it just, we have to start with the point of, of, of salvation. We have to start from that point. 
Because when we read it from that point, when we read it from the freedom that we have in Christ, then we can't help but go and do, do the word, right? So. And so what do we do? If we're doing the word, if we're blessed in our doing, um, if we're, we're in this pure religion, <coughs> excuse me, as our ESV uh, translators do it for us, um, if we're not fooling ourselves, what are we doing? Uh, well, verse 27, right? Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. Yeah. Okay. Right. There's, there's the, there's, uh, as Paul said earlier in the, in the first, or in 26, you know, the one who doesn't bridle his tongue and deceive his heart, but we're being called to, you know, a, a pure and undefiled religion um, where we bridle our tongue, um, you know, think, thinking about, I've not a big horse rider, but thinking about, you know, um, keeping, sort of keeping your tongue under control, speaking the word, which is good to do, um, and then um, not deceiving your heart, not, not falling into sin, but rather um, the, the things that will give you life and life to the full, speaking the word and, um, you know, visiting orphans and widows in their affliction and keeping oneself unstained. And how do we do that? Well, it's always be by continually anchoring ourselves to the word. Absolutely. Which is gospel and life. In life. This word, this gospel, that takes away our stains, that has taken away our stains, um, taken our guilt, our cup of wrath, our yeah. condemnation, and Christ who gives us his unstained garment, his white garment, his purity. Um, and then as little Christs, we look in the mirror and we see that unstained garment of Christ and we go and live our lives accordingly. Yeah. Always returning to the promise where that yeah. garment is always being replaced and purified, even as we strive uh, to do our best to care for those who are neglected, um, to love others, and to follow God's law. Yeah, it's the rhythm of the Christian life, doing good works, um, reading your scriptures, but then coming back to, to church uh, to receive the forgiveness when you stumble. Because again, it's not about you, it's about Christ's word working through you. And, and the forgiveness, you, you know, there's a lot of forgiveness that uh, is given to you when you stumble. Yeah, absolutely. That brings us both to the end of chapter one and to the end of this episode. So uh, please join us next time. Thank you for joining us today. And until then, uh, may you be blessed by the word. May you do the word and always return again to the word. We'll see you next time.